Hi there. So I'm going to review um, a, a book I recently wrote. I'm going to kind of go through it. It's an, it's an interesting book. It's called um, This Is Your Brain on Food. See it? This Is Your Brain on Food. Great book. Um, it talks about how food uh, affects our mental health, which is something that um, you know maybe a lot of people don't think about. Um, it's recent. It's more recent. Uh, it has to do with gut health, the bacteria in our gut, and how it affects our mental health um, status. So, um, it was it was an interesting book. It was it was pretty amazing. It was written by a nutritional psychiatrist. She went to Harvard Medical School. I'm not gonna say try to say her name because I'm not sure. But. Um, yeah, it was a great book, and um, it's just, yeah, it's just great. I mean, thinking about how food interacts with mental health, and um, maybe it could be a pathway in the future to getting rid of pharmaceuticals to use food, natural, you know, natural ways, just use food to treat mental health um, illness. I think I think that would be great. Um, mental health is a big topic in, in today's society. Um, there's a lot of issues and things going on um, in society, in the world today, with mental health. Um, so it's, it's great. I'm going to go over some of the chapters. Um, some of the chapters in it are, let's see, chapter, yeah, the, okay, the subtitle is An Indispensable Guide to the Surprising Foods That Fight Depression. Anxiety, PTSD, OCD, ADHD, and more. So that's cool. Um, chapter one is the gut-brain romance. Chapter two is on depression and how probiotics, omega-3s, and the Mediterranean diet eating pattern helps with that. Um, PTSD, ADHD, Dementia, brain fog, obsessive compulsive disorder, insomnia and fatigue, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, um, libido. And so it's a great book. Um, so yeah, it talks about in chapter one how how depression it can it can affect your heart. Um, and oddly enough, Hi Hippocrates said that bad digestion is the root of all evil. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty impressive considering, you know, that gut health. Like, yeah, the, in, in the book it talks about this nerve that's called the vagus nerve, where it goes from your your stomach to your brain, and it transmits signals, and um, so it affects your mental health what you eat. Um, um, yeah, some things they mentioned, it says inf infections through your bloodstream can make you seem like you lost your mind. But people who have just like, uh, an infection of the bloodstream, it can affect their mental state because of that. Um, it's totally connected to the body. Um, yeah, so let's see what else, um. Antibiotics, for instance, they, I mean, they, um, basically what they do is they wipe out the gut bacteria, the good and the bad, wipes out both. So, which, uh, it, it can, you know, if there's a bunch of bad bacteria in the gut, the antibiotics will just wipe it out and it'll, it can change the mental, um, mental function, mental state. So, yeah, one interesting thing he said was all it takes is two hours worth of psychological stress to completely change the bacteria in your gut. It's pretty interesting. Just two hours of psychological stress can change it. It can change your the bacteria in your gut. Um, so those are some notable things from chapter one. Um, it says food is a drug. Um, 
The gut's referred to as a second brain because it contains millions of neurons. The largest collection in the body, actually. Oddly enough, neurons in your gut. So, um, and chapter two is on depression. Probiotics, omega threes, and the Mediterranean diet. So it says, bad eating habits don't combat depression; they deepen it. And that's one thing they mentioned. Um, so people think, oh. I'm going to go eat uh, a big, huge burger and a bunch of fries and a soda or something. And uh, it doesn't actually doesn't, it doesn't heal you. It actually hurts you. So even if it gives you some kind of initial rush or something, um, high sugar intake, it can worsen depression. Um, there's something called blue bowel depression in your gut. Um, People with depression had many different types of bacteria in their gut microbiome compared to non-depressed people. So depressed people have more types of bacteria in their gut, I guess, um, from being, being de from being depressed, it causes more, I guess. Um, inflammation and depression are closely linked. Inflammation is the culprit of a lot of bad stuff. Sadly, causes a lot of problems. Um, talks about prebiotics and probiotics, about how those are good. Uh, I said lactobacillus is in good yogurt, like a good, like plain yogurt. Um, probiotics reduce cortisol levels, which reduces stress. So, um, Let's see, other probiotic foods are like cheddar, mozzarella, gouda, uh, kombucha is probiotics. Prebiotics are beans, oats, bananas, berries, garlic, onions, asparagus. So um, probiotics break down prebiotics to form short chain fatty acids that help reduce gut inflammation, block the growth of cancerous cells, and help the growth of healthy cells. Awesome. Foods that will dull your mood. Um, yeah, sugar. Um, see, eating better quality carbs uh, was linked with uh, better mental health and gut health, like whole grains, uh, things with high fiber in it. Um, so things that rank low on the glycemic index. So the glycemic index is a measure of how quickly foods convert to glucose when broken down during digestion. The faster food turns into glucose in the body, the higher the, um, glycemic index. Like something like ice cream is like at the lowest. It's one of the best things actually on that list, surprisingly. Like a plain ice cream, probably like a, a vanilla or something. Um, and at the probably the worst is like a white flour tortilla. It's probably the worst. Artificial sweeteners uh, can be toxic. They can alter brain concentrations of mood mood regulating neural transfer transmitters. Um, aspartame. And Diet Coke, people think Diet Coke is better because it's diet, and in reality, it's not better because when you, one of my professors always said, when you mess with nature, you, you're you going to pay. If you're going to manipulate stuff and scientifically alter stuff, um, you're better off just eating real sugar rather than um, something manufactured, something fake. Um, fried foods, not good. Fried foods are not good. Um, good fats, good fats are avocados, almonds, olive oil. Those are good for you. Um, luckily, the FDA banned trans fats in 2018. 
So pretty much businesses had to stop altogether. No more trans fats. Like trans fats used to be, yeah, and a lot of stuff. Um, so um, nitrates are bad. Bacon, salami, sausage can help tip people to bipolar disorder. Those type of things are bad. Omega-3 fatty acids are good. Um, cut down on the omega-6s and get more omega-3s. Uh, omega-3s are like fatty fish, walnuts, vegetable oils, dark leafy vegetables, salmon, mackerel, tuna, herring, sardines. I good. I eat sardines. I put them in like a little container. Or they, they have them in containers. I always got those. Um, canola oil is better than regular vegetable oil. Um, eggs, milk, and yogurt have fortified omega-3 products these days. So you can get those. Um, food, foods that are rich in helpful vitamins that, that have folate, B9, B12. Citrus fruits, bananas, avocados, nuts, and seeds. Those are are good to help treat depression. Uh, it says a deficiency in vitamin A may lead to shrinkage of the brain. Sweet potatoes, carrots, spinach, black eyed peas. Vitamin C is re responsible for proper brain functioning in neurotransmitter synthesis. Citrus fruits, cantaloupe, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. Iron's good. Like shellfish, red meats, uh, pumpkin seeds, broccoli, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate's known to be like a superfood. So that's good. Magnesium's good. Avocados, nuts, seeds, whole grains, salmon, mackerel. Magnesium helps a lot for depression, it looks like. Um, selenium and Brazil nuts. There's a bunch of spices that help different things um, it says a third of the population suffers from some sort of anxiety disorder so um, only 50 to 60 percent of people respond to medication and psychotherapy so people who are on those drugs and in psychotherapy only 50 to 60 percent actually will respond to it will get better so only a quarter will have a complete resolution of symptoms. Yeah. The introduction of just one bad bacteria into the microbiome can change the whole status of your gut health. Up to 60% of patients with anxiety have irritable bowel syndrome. So that's directly connected with nutrition. Um, leaky gut syndrome. Um, it, it happens. It weakens the gut wall, prevents bacteria from entering the bloodstream. It's like an ir irregularity in your microbiome. Diets. Diets that are high high bad carbs and high sugar cause serotonin levels to be decreased and anxiety increases high fat and high carb diets um, bad um, caffeine can make anxiety a lot worse so if you have anxiety coffee and a bunch of soda it's probably not the best so alcohol it, may calm down for calm you down for a, a bit but in the long run it's not the best um, yeah Let's see what else um, so foods that have gluten in them so gluten if, if you're suffering from anxiety, um, gluten might interact with it in, the, in a, it might cause a bad interaction. Um, foods that have gluten, bread, baked goods, pasta, cereal, crackers, beer, gravy, soup. Foods without gluten, 
corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas. Better. It's a better option. Fresh fruit, ice cream, yogurt, gelatin, zucchini noodles, breakfast cereals made from corn or rice. Raw veggies with dips instead of crackers. So instead of using crackers with dip and whatnot, use vegetables. Gluten-free soups. Um, foods that reduce anxiety beans brown rice berries bran baked potato with the skin on but potatoes eat eat them sparingly um, so yeah, eat, eat the eat them sparingly um, this is fi fiber can help reduce anxiety and keep weight down because it takes time to chew and you realize you're full so yeah, it takes longer to pass through the stomach and the small intestine, so it makes you feel fuller longer. That's why that's why fiber is so good. Everybody talks about fiber, you know, it's kind of a thing. Um, when the brain is inflamed, um, an inflammatory marker can increase dopamine levels, and omega threes can um, lessen those effects. Tryptophan can increase brain serotonin. That's known. Everybody talks about tryptophan around Thanksgiving. Um, and talk about how you get all tired afterwards. But um, the tryptophan thing, um, I don't, I, from what I understand, there's not enough tryptophan in Turkey for Thanksgiving. There's not enough tryptophan to get you that tired. But usually it's because people eat so much during Thanksgiving that all the blood rushes to their stomach. And away from their brain, away from their, their head. So then they feel lightheaded and tired and drowsy. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think Thanksgiving turkey has enough um, tryptophan in it to actually do that, from what I understand. Um, avocado hummus is good. Vitamin D de decreases inflammation and toxic destruction of cells. Um... About 80% of vitamin D comes from the sunlight. So like I talked about earlier in another video. 80% um, of vitamin D comes from sunlight. So um, egg yolks, salmon, those are good for vitamin D. Thiamine can help for reducing anxiety. Like fortified breakfast cereals. Um, pork, fish, beans, lentils, green peas, enriched cereals, breads, noodles, rice. Sunflower seeds, yogurt. Um, vitamin B complex can reduce anxiety and oxidative stress in the brain. That's good. Um, in older women, women suffering from premenstrual stress, um, vitamin B6 may provide significant relief. So that's good. Vitamin A, C, and E are good and have been shown to be low in patients with anxiety. So yeah, those those vitamins tend to be low, I guess. Vitamin A, C, and E are people with anxiety. So so look into yeah some foods that have that have those or like a multivitamin. You know, if your doctor recommends it, that can fill in the gaps for that. Um, when, it says when people are anxious, they excrete more magnesium in their urine, so they become deficient, which worsens anxiety. Um, so if you take more magnesium food, rich foods, then it can ease stress and change harmful chemical levels in the brain. Um, foods like Almonds, spinach, cashews, peanuts, cooked black beans, peanut butter, avocado. Um, probably take about six to twelve weeks for it to take effect. Take a bit for it to start changing. Start changing the damage that's been done. So magnesium is good. Um, some good nutritional herbal supplements are passion flower. Lysine, L-Arginine, um, 
Passion flower causes less sedation than pharmaceutical meds. So it's not quite as intense. Dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds, Brazil nuts, camel meal tea helps people relax. Staying hydrated helps. Um, lavender tea or candle aromatherapy helps. So, um, chapter nine was see bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, L theanine, healthy fats, and the ketogenic diet. So, um, says a low sodium diet for hypertension. It may enhance lithium reabsorption in the kidneys, causing lithium blood levels to shoot up. Um, yeah. It says bipolar patients often have hypertension. If you're taking lithium, it's important to keep sodium levels consistent. Um, grapefruit juice can increase medications in the bloodstream. So I guess grapefruit juice is known to not be the best, not to be to be one of not the best things really. Um, people who ate more seafood had a lower incidence of bipolar, depression, omega threes. Lithium increases magnesium levels in the blood. Um, for bipolar depression, people need to eat zinc, eggs, cooked oysters. So. Yeah, I mean, all this stuff is interesting, you know, like to, like I, for years, I, I never understood how um, foods interacted with the, with the mental health. So it's interesting to see all these things that they're talking about. Um, yeah, uh, just all these different foods that interact with different problems in different ways. And, you know, this, this doctor, Uma Naidu, yeah, she's interesting. She did all this research and. Um, it says people with schizophrenia have less of a diversity of gut bacteria. So they have a unique gut bacteria not found in healthy guts. So they don't have, I guess, a big diversity. People, people with schizophrenia don't have a big diversity of gut bacteria. But they have unique ones that are not found in healthy guts. For, for whatever reason, something that is just in their system. Sadly, um, so there's a greater likelihood of psychosis for people who eat refined sugars. Um, so like processed foods, like yeah, you know, white flour, even like candy bars, like um, yeah, things that are processed sugar as opposed to something like a, an apple or a banana, something like that. Um, says people with pe um, people with schizophrenia have ab abnormal brain metabolism, which leads to oxidative stress. Um, alcohol can increase suspiciousness, hallucinations, and paranoia. Alpha lipoic acid, um, it reduces brain inflammation. It, it reduces brain inflammation. It, it improves cognition as well. So that's good. Um, vitamin C is good. Vitamin B, folate. L-theanine is calming. Uh, green tea, black tea, oolong tea melatonin that's like a sleep hormone um, eggs fish and nuts are good sources of melatonin as well so yeah those are those are a few chapters that I wrote some notes on but yeah there's other ones um, so yeah I guess for, for PTSD glutamates are good blueberries um, ADHD, polyphenols, milk casings, um, chapter six, 
Yeah, so these, uh, it's pretty interesting how all these kind of interact with, with everything, uh, with the brain and how it just affects everything. So it's, it's, uh, I suggest you check the book out. It's called This Is Your Brain on Food. Put that one more time. Uh, I suggest you, you check it out, read it, delve, delve deep into it. Um, it's a great book. It's, a uh, no uh, substitute for medical advice or anything, but it's interesting to find that they're finding they're doing more research to find, um, you know, more more things going on with with the brain and um, in regards to food. So, um, all right, thanks for watching.